We are in the midst of a poverty simulation. So essentially our students are learning about some of the many challenges faced by those living in poverty. Um, this gives them a chance to learn how hard it is to be not only a single parent, but a single parent uh, trying to get to work, trying to get their kids in school, and trying to be successful while working through all those challenges. We have students that are single parents. Um, we have grandparents that are raising grandchildren. We have families of four, families of five. We also have students that are uh, elderly women that are trying to survive on SSI. I am playing the role of the super center, so that's where students can come get food, uh, their clothing, miscellaneous items, and prescriptions. Uh, my interaction to the, er, the students is if they come to me, I can sell them you know, whatever they need. For the different families, they have different prices to pay. I also accept food stamps, and that's it. The first week was a little rough. There was like four families that didn't come and see me and feed their kids. So by week three, depending on if they fed them or kept up, they'll be getting a notification from me saying that they are not feeding their families, and it can lead to sickness uh, or their kids being taken away. of the poverty simulation, um, we had a terrible incident in which the water main broke at school. So all the kids had to be picked up and brought home. There's been a headlights outbreak at one of our daycare facilities. Um, we have folks that were robbed. We have folks that have been, um, had different situations because their cars were stolen. Uh, a little bit of everything, just as in real life where things pop up. We have folks that are dealing with many, many different issues. Kids in school and kids in daycare. But I can't go anywhere because I have no transportation. And I can't get transportation without money. And I can't get any money without transportation to get there. And then I get home from not having transportation somehow, <laughs> only to find my car stolen. And then the police come, and they're useless. And then I get robbed the next week. It's a terrible, terrible month. It's like impossible to get out of the hole. You just keep digging and getting farther. And it's like, there's nothing that comes along that helps. I'm getting arrested for yeah, no, My name is Ann Aber, and I have three children and an unemployed husband. And right now, um, my husband is dealing with my suspended child who had a little incident at school. And so I have to wait for him to get home so that I can start paying some bills because I don't have any traffic tickets to get anywhere or any bus tickets. So I'm just going to have to wait for them to get home so hopefully we can buy food for our family. It kind of puts it more like closer to home. Like you can kind of see how average people would struggle with paying their bills and stuff like that because that's the thing we have the most trouble with is paying for the bills because we know we have to get food so I don't know it's just hard to see how we're gonna pay for all of this Okay, gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna have to get to the bank and get you the change. I'll get it before this week's out. Overall, it's it's a very frustrating thing, but um, it's an eye opener, regardless. So, you know, simulation or not, it's it's an interesting thing to do. So, I'd recommend it for people to recommend people to get involved when they can. Well, I am the quick cash. Uh, I do payday loans, title loans, uh, I cash checks, and I sell transportation passes. And these are vital for getting anyone. And I charge two dollars if you don't have one. My character is 50 years old, and we're taking care of our grandchildren because our daughter is incarcerated. So we're trying to figure out, going back to work, how much are we going to be able to afford and obviously what we aren't going to be able to afford. So it's really hard juggling between taking them to school and figuring out when we work and paying off the bills. I don't understand how people can do it. It's, it's a lot harder than you would just think it would be. So I, uh, it's pretty cool that people are able to do this on a daily basis. I guess it just broadened my awareness on situations and like I didn't like you realize that there's poverty but it, you don't realize how hard it is. I've had a better understanding of like why people are in those situations and more sympathy towards them and why they use those agencies and stuff like that. You know I think they did um, they did well. Um, you know I think when you when you're in poverty 
money is such a big thing. So in a way, I felt like I was, not that I was in a position of power, but it was just an interesting position to watch people. They really needed their jobs. Um, and it was hard. I think, I think people, um, it was hard to watch people who needed to go, leave their work to go uh, have their kids pulled out of school or something like that. I thought they did a good job, um, but they were, they were really uh, just, they could feel the weight of, of responsibility and, and whatnot. So it was fun. As is one of the tenets of Mount Mercy, which is to help those who are in need, um, born out of the Sisters of Mercy, I think it gives people an awareness. And, and that's kind of the first step towards, um, towards moving in the right direction, is sort of having an awareness and... and I remember G.I. Joe says knowledge is half the battle. And, and, you know, getting this knowledge and knowing that other people are having these experiences, it sort of provides the first step to making it okay to step out and help somebody else who might be in trouble. And, and having um, maybe even a little bit of knowledge of what somebody in trouble might look like and what they might be going through. So, so just that little bit of, of information can help um, anybody step out and, and lend a helping hand. I hope that our students will understand some of the challenges that folks in poverty face and um, in turn they can understand how to provide better care and assistance to those not only in the workplace but what can they do in their communities to serve and to support those in need.